This is my cat, Albert. The other day while he was busy doing cat stuff, Albert found a box in the attic. Is it a common box? Nope. This box is exceptional. Magic. Simply incredible. What's so peculiar about it? Every time Albert opens it, a number comes out. Albert has opened it many times, hoping to figure it out, but he could not. What a mystery. He then showed the box to his cat friends. Some of them played with it, trying to predict what would come out before Albert opens it. From time to time, they succeeded, but after a while, even the best of them always ended up making a mistake. Albert was getting frustrated. He wanted to know what this box was all about, and so came to me. I explained to him that people in my field, statistics, use this kind of box every day. The one he found in the attic was probably a leftover from an old project. I explained to Albert that no one can crack the box. How is this possible? It's fairly simple. The box was designed that way. What comes out is, by definition, impossible to predict. Albert was a bit disappointed by my answer. But he nonetheless wanted to know more about the box. For instance, how was the one he found built? To build this kind of box, you need to define two things. First, you need to decide what is allowed to come out. This is called the domain of the box. For instance, you could pick the numbers 22, 25, 37, and 50. While it's not possible to predict what number will actually come out when you open the box, you are sure that one of the four will be the result because this is the domain of the box. Second, you need to pick up weights, one weight for each number. By default, each number is as likely as any other to come out. So, if the domain is made up of four numbers, the odds of coming out are one against three for each number. If you want the number 25 to come out more often than the others, you need to then reorganize the weights. You must be careful though. If you add weight somewhere, you have to remove it somewhere else. If the total weight is not one unit, the blueprint is wrong and the box based on it won't work properly. Albert gets it, but what was the blueprint from the box in the attic? This is a little embarrassing. I had no idea where the blueprint could be. Not to worry though. Indeed, if we observe long enough what comes out of a box for which we do not know what the blueprint is, it's pretty easy to guess what the blueprint was. When Albert showed the box to his cat friends, he had gathered 100 results. Agreed, these are a lot of numbers, but look, we only got zeros, ones, and twos. These three numbers are the domain. We still miss the weights though. Among the 100 observations Albert made, zero came out 54 times, one came out 12 times, and two, 34 times. The weights of the box should therefore be around 54 one hundredths, 12 one hundredths, and 34 one hundredths. I see that Albert is getting tired. Yet there are so many things to tell about these boxes. For example, it is possible to build boxes from which a color comes out. Let's say red, orange, yellow, green, and why not blue? The yellow color could come out half the time, and the other colors one eighth the time. There are also boxes such that the domain is a segment. For instance, a segment that goes from minus 5 to 2. Any value between minus 5 and 2, like 1.3476 or minus 4.1, is allowed to come out. These boxes are, however, very hard to work with. Generations of statisticians have scratched their heads before a proper way to deal with them was found. We'll make a video about them in the future. Some boxes are quite extreme, with a domain encompassing infinitely large values. For instance, a box such that any natural number can come out, such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but also 1,000, 100,000, 2 millions, 106 billions, etc. With such boxes, it's very difficult to assign a weight to each value of the domain while making sure the total sum of these weights remains one. The problem is so severe that statisticians use formulas to help them with this delicate task. The formula of Mr. Poisson is, for instance, very popular. As soon as the symbol lambda in this formula is replaced by an actual value, a weight for each element of the domain is easy to calculate. Generated weights can be indirectly personalized by changing the value of lambda in the formula. The larger lambda is, the less weight we get at the beginning of the domain. The strength of this formula is that generated weights always add up to one. Mr. Poisson made sure of it. Oh, look, Albert is asleep. I guess that's it for today. Not to worry, however, my attic is full of mysteries that are waiting to be discovered. Ooh, before you go, one last thing. We statisticians don't like to speak about boxes. Not fancy enough, right? Instead, we call these boxes random variables. See you soon.